I'll begin with the 4-H pencil and the first thing I'll do is measure the overall height and compare it to the overall width of my still eyes. What I see is that it's just a bit wider than it is tall. So I'll draw a horizontal rectangle that's just a little bit wider than it is tall. Next I want to measure this corner that's nearest to me. If I measure from the corner to the right hand side and then I compare that measurement from the corner to the left hand side, what I find is that I can split this width up into thirds to find where that corner goes. Now I want to find the bottom of my cylinder. If I measure from the bottom to that line and from that line to the top of my still life, I get equal measurements. This tells me I can draw a horizontal line right through the center of my rectangle to find the bottom of that cylinder. Next I'll draw the right side of the box. If I measure from the corner to the side of the box and from the side of the box to the very right edge of my still life, I get an equal measurement. So I'll just cut this small square in half. Let's move on to the left side of the cylinder. I want to compare it to something that looks like it might be a similar measurement. When I compare it to this left side of the box, it seems just a little bit smaller. So when I draw it, I'll make up for that difference. Now I'd like to find where the lids go. Notice that the bottom of the lids can be found by splitting my height up into fourths. So I've drawn little lines where the bottom of the lids go and now I'd like to find the top of the lids. If I measure the height of this lid and I compare it to the height of the ellipse, I get an equal measurement. So on my paper, I'll just split that space in half. To find the height of the bottom lid, I'll just compare it to the top lid and what I get is an equal measurement. So I'll just transfer that measurement down to here. Okay, now that I've placed all the horizontal and vertical lines, I'll move on to my angles. Make sure that your pencil is perpendicular to your line of sight as you turn it to match your angle. It's almost like there's a clock right in front of you and you're just turning the hand of the clock to match the angles that you're looking for. Once you find your angle, make sure that you don't change that angle as you transfer it onto your page. In this case, these angles are close enough to each other that they match each other, but that won't always be so. You'll have to check each time. It's also a good idea to draw the invisible lines at times. You'll see in just a minute how this can help you with your drawing.
If you're ever unsure whether you are transferring angles correctly, just double check them. This one appears to be correct. Okay, remember the invisible corner that we drew? Now I can use it to correctly place this last angle. You can also look at the negative shapes that two objects make wherever they meet to help you draw your lines in the right place. Finally, let's draw our ellipses. Notice how the top ellipse actually matches the bottom ellipse. I like to draw the outside box that surrounds my ellipse and then put little center marks all the way around. These marks are where your ellipses will touch these outside dimensions. I also like to draw the entire ellipse, even if I can't see part of it. The bottom of my cylinder will end up looking a little more natural if I do this. Now for the second step. I want to pay attention to details. Notice the negative shapes and how the lids stick out just a touch. With a lighter 4-H pencil, I drew the substructure of my still life. And now I'll use a 2-H pencil to draw in the details and to further define all the visible lines. At this step, you'll leave your invisible lines alone. There's no need to darken them since they've already served their purpose. Keep your drawing nice and loose. It's up to you if you want to use an eraser at any point, but I enjoy being able to see the invisible lines in my final drawing. Of all the drawing techniques, sighting can be one of the most difficult to master. It just takes a little practice. So take it slow, go get some practice, and good luck.